So let's think about waste pipes for a minute. Imagine you're standing uh, in a bathroom in a building and you're looking down to the sink, you're about to brush your teeth or wash your face, uh, and the pipe was laid out the way it's drawn here. So the pipe went uh, uh, down from the sink and then into the wall and then down the pipe and then eventually to this sewer pipe uh, out in the street. What would be the obvious problem with this? Well, clearly the obvious problem is uh, I'm gonna be getting sewer gases right up from that pipe, straight from that sewer pipe in the street. Uh, there's air is essentially filling most of this pipe until there's uh, some wastewater that's, that's uh, flushed down it. Uh, so if that air is just sort of open pipe, that means that's an open pipe all the way to the sewer, to the sewer line, which clearly would be a really foul smelling uh, element. Now, if that was going to the outside, it probably wouldn't be a big deal because the air would blow it around and you wouldn't even notice it. But if it was going into a small room, uh, like a bathroom or a kitchen or a bedroom or a laundry room or something like that, that room would fill up with the sewer gas very, very quickly and it would be just unlivable. So what do you do? What, how did people figure out how to deal with this? Well, they kind of came up with this very simple and clever idea, uh, which was the trap. So instead of it going straight down, there's a little trap there. There's this little uh, P-shaped element uh, that then creates a spot where water will fill up in the trap and create a block, essentially traps the sewer gases from being able to get out through the sink. So that shape then does something like that, where, where the water fills up that bottom part of the trap and therefore the sewer gases can't get uh, passed through. People often assume that the trap is actually there in order to trap uh, like wedding rings and things like that that fall down the sink. That's a handy addition that, that you can get out of a trap. Uh, it also stops uh, sort of a filtering system, stops some of the gunk from, from getting into the main system and causing problems elsewhere. Uh, but the main purpose of it is to trap the water that then traps the sewer gases from coming out uh, into the space. So as I said, this is a really clever idea that somebody came up with uh, hundreds of years ago. Uh, and I'm, I know I would have thought of trying to do some sort of uh, mechanical closer or something like that. The idea of just using the water itself, I think is just really uh, an incredibly smart idea. But it has a couple of drawbacks. One of the drawbacks is uh, if I have a whole series of uh, uh, sinks or toilets or whatever, uh, one floor after another, if you imagine that, uh, say, this sink fills up and you're washing dishes or doing something and now you're going to let all that water go and it's going to go rushing down that pipe as it goes down that wall, well, there's air in front of it and there's air behind it, right? The, there's only so much water that's filling that pipe but it's gonna fill the pipe up. And so as it rushes by, it's gonna push the air that's in front of it out of the way, and it's gonna pull air behind it uh, because it's something that's creating a vacuum. Something has to reoccupy that space. So if you imagine that water flowing down very quickly down that pipe, as it rushes by and it needs to create that vacuum, it has to pull something some air in to fill that space, that, fill the, that void in the pipe, what's it gonna do? Well, it's gonna just siphon that uh, uh, trap and pull that water right out. So uh, as that water from above is rushing by, it's just gonna siphon this water right out of the way and to follow the, uh, the, the water from above, uh, sort of flushing right on through. So therefore, if I have a whole series of these things stacked one on top of the other, multiple floors, very quickly the traps are gonna get siphoned clean. And therefore I'm gonna have that exact same problem of that sewer gas smell coming back up through. So, hmm, what do you do? The traps seem like a brilliant uh, solution, but it's missing something. Well, what's it missing? It's missing a vent pipe. So a vent pipe is a system where at the top of every fixture, there's not only a pipe that goes down to the sewer, but there's also a pipe that goes up to the roof. 
Once it goes up to the roof, opens up to the sky, and therefore when the rush of water goes by, when that, that siphon wants to happen, instead of pulling the much heavier water out of a trap, it's going to pull much lighter air from the roof. And so that air is going to fill in that, that space behind the, the rushing water much more easily than it would uh, to pull all that water out of the, uh, siphon all that water out of the trap. So what this means, is kind of counterintuitively, if you walk through buildings, you've seen all this uh, a million times probably, but just sort of worth mentioning that when you really start adding up the number of linear feet, you probably have more linear feet of uh, vent pipe than you do of actual drainage pipe. Uh, it's, there are vertical pipes going up from the fixtures that are solely filled with air all over the place. Now, this brings forth a number of different issues. One is that the uh, waste pipes will sort of, by the nature of it, uh, kind of clean themselves. They, you know, as, as water flows through them, as even waste water flows through them, uh, there's sort of a natural process where they're sort of clearing themselves out. They get clogged and other things happen and they, uh, things need to be, to be maintained. Uh, but there's sort of a general process of those things sort of clearing themselves through as long as the gravity is running uh, correctly uh, through the pipe and the pipe is always sloping downhill. The vent pipes, however, have this very acidic uh, and uh, problematic uh, air in them. And that acidic air, as it uh, goes up and flows uh, towards the, the top of the vent pipe, will eventually start uh, cooling off and uh, condensing some of its very acidic moisture that's in there onto the walls of those vent pipes. So the vent pipes actually tend to also, not only are there a lot of vent pipes, they tend to actually deteriorate before any of the other pipes. So if you're having to do any maintenance work, the vent pipes are almost always the, the first thing that, that has to be maintained. You also have to make sure that the vent pipes are sloped in the opposite direction so that as the, that condensation, that fairly unpleasant condensation, starts to, uh, to, to find its way to the, to the walls of, of those pipes, there's always a way for it to drain back down and eventually find its way to the uh, main waste pipes. So uh, everything is, is angled in such a way as to always be draining positively. Now, there's a lot of different specific ways that you can, you can vent different fixtures. Uh, we're not going to really get into all the detail right now, but that is one of the things you might want to be looking for is some of the sort of fancier, trickier ones. It's hard to know what they would ask a question about, but for now we're just going to talk about the general uh, basic ways that, uh, that the venting and waste piping works. So we have the idea of a plumbing fixture, say a sink or a water closet or a shower. Each one of those is going to have a, a drain pipe. That drain pipe is going to have a trap that traps the, the wastewater in it so that that wastewater can become a trap for the sewer gases. Uh, each one of them will then connect to a larger system that eventually gets out uh, to the uh, sewer in the street. And each one will also have a vertical vent pipe that goes upwards towards the roof or some outdoor outlet. Uh, that doesn't mean that each individual pipe goes up through the roof. They usually gather together and collect up and then only a few pipes go up through the roof because it's always a bad idea to have a lot of holes in your roof. So you want to have as sort of few of those vent pipes actually penetrating through as possible. Uh, and so you often end up with uh, kind of intriguing looking diagrams that uh, have multiple elements coming uh, all through and they're all venting upwards uh, until they get to that roof element. Now, sometimes when people talk about this, they say, really, if you, you just have the open sewer going up to the roof, doesn't that make everything smell bad? If you actually go up onto a roof, you can actually usually smell it a little bit. You can, you can tell there are vent pipes that are connected to the, to the sewer, but because you're up on the roof and the wind is blowing and there's big open sky, uh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't build up in any way that would be uncomfortable for anyone. Uh, unless there's a very peculiar way that the, the air moves in that particular space. Uh, so in general, it's not a problem at all, but it would be a problem if it was going into a room, if it was going into an enclosed space or even potentially a courtyard. Uh, a couple of other terms to mention. One is the idea of a clean-out. 
uh, you will find that every place that the uh, direction changes on any uh, waste pipe, any major change in direction, there will always be a clean out. That means there's some spot where the pipe continues the opposite direction for just a second and there's a cap on the top and you can spin that cap off and get a clean out rod in there and clean that, that whole thing out. Uh, so at the bottom of all the verticals, at any major 90 degree turn or any other kind of uh, um, strange uh, shape in the pipes, uh, even pipes that are straight but uh, go for a very long way, you might have multiple clean outs along it just so that you had the ability to, uh, to figure out where there was a problem and to, to be able to get to it with, with a rotting system or, or whatever else you needed to do. This may not seem like a big deal, but if you have a clean out, it also means you have to have access to the clean out, which means that there uh, has to be an access panel if it's not readily exposed uh, into the room. Uh, if it's hidden behind drywall, there has to be an access panel. Well, if that happens to be in the middle of your main lobby or in the living room or uh, in the conference room or something, that can be a big deal. So thinking about where those cleanouts go, uh, thinking about how the system's going to work is actually kind of a design decision, even though it seems like it's only a uh, systems decision. So that's one of those kind of unusual ones you have to be a little careful about. So every fixture will have that, uh, that trap, and every fixture will have uh, that vent pipe going up to the roof. Uh, they might go up by itself, it might connect over to uh, another one, uh, but all of those things will be interconnected, both going down and going up. 